Good morning, everybody. Good morning. All right, let me see who's there. Okay, are you able to see my screen? Uh, yes. Yes. Good, good. Okay, I guess students, um, are you a little bit exhausted now toward the end of semester? Hello? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, look at this schedule. We're right here. We're number, we're on uh, week 13. All right, okay, so two and a half weeks to go. And in fact, last week, our presentation, I, I think Dr. Lopez will be okay uh, with the idea that we turn in recording your video recording. Mm. Right, in other words, uh, we, don't, we don't need to occupy um, the Zoom capability because there are a lot of students reporting problem with their internet connection. Mm. Uh, I also wonder, uh, Dr. Lopez, my understanding <laughs> is that he actually postponed the lecture yesterday. Yes. And so were you able to uh, get or view his recording according to his announcement? Did he make a recording for the lecture? I don't think he made a recording yet. Not yet? I don't, I don't think so. I, I remember going on there looking, but I haven't looked past the first time I initially looked, so. Okay. Wow. You know, the only thing I will be concerned about, um, during the last two weeks, and you know, instructors, usually they're nice uh, delaying the deadline of the reports. And at the same time, they spend a lot more time explaining the theory. The theory. For example, I heard uh, last week he was actually going over the NMR, <clears throat> some of the NMR chapter or PowerPoint slides and I got it also and so you know when when instructors spend time on the details it really means delaying or you know not being able to cover the chapters that will go on the final exam so in order to finish the chapter they usually do it really quickly and rely on students to read on their own. I can tell you when that happens, yeah. It, it, well, it happens to 420 uh, occasionally. And um, well, I, I should say all the, all the classes I've been teaching, I noticed quite a few lecture professors, uh, you know, jam up a lot of the chapters during the last two weeks of uh, semester. Um, and stu students are not, not able to digest. So if this is the case, you really need to, uh, I think the best is to read a lot more on your own. If not, at least you have to view the, the videos on YouTube. Okay, especially <clears throat> stereochemistry. 
there's really no shortcut. You really have to roll up your sleeves and, and, and do the work. Okay, exercise. So let me see how many students are here. One, two, three, four. Hey, what's going on here in this class? We don't, we don't really have a good participation. We don't have a good uh, intended, uh, attendance rate. <clears throat> Any questions so far, Andrew or William? No, I don't think so. Okay. Okay, uh, I want all of you to look at this, okay? Um, Wait, so the midterm is moved to May 4th, right? Well, that you have to ask Dr. Lopez. That's what he put on an email or the... At the yeah. same time, he's moving the peptide report. Really? In other words, I think he was responding to one of students saying, you know, just too many deadlines. And, and so uh, peptide report is postponed a week till April 27th. And then the midterm is postponed a week. And so I think on May 4th, the week of May 4th, I will be receiving the videos from all of you. Okay? Is that okay? Yes. Let's wait for his uh, official announcement on this video. Did he send that announcement yet about oral presentation? You no, no. Okay, uh, so I sent my, uh, I sent the paper that I was uh, using for my oral presentation to him instead of you. I just realized that right now. Oh, <laughs> you should send it to me. Yeah, and I I don't know how much time I can spend on you know, reading the abstract and then respond to you. So you can pick my brain preparing the, the PowerPoint. I, I, I don't know. I think the general guideline is always, okay, you spend uh, like five minutes introducing the background, the background information about the, the research. Okay, five minutes, five to 10 minutes, then usually there will be a lot of questions coming from the floor. Now we don't do it um, in, in front of the audience. So you, you just videotape the presentation as if there's no questions at all. But the thing is, um, Dr. Lopez says, um, I can actually write questions and ask students to clarify or explain by email. Ah, uh, okay, we'll, we'll give it a try, okay? I think uh, whatever uh, our default setting is right now, we just have to bear with it, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six students now on board. And let me, let me get going now, okay? Um, First of all, I will have to cover um, the common mistakes on the Green Yard reaction, okay? I think um, it may relate to your final exam uh, because when I noticed this, this term <clears throat> or subject mentioned in Dr. L uh, Lopez's lecture schedule, look at this, the asymmetric synthesis, this is to tell you I'm introducing a new chiral center, okay? And so this topic <clears throat> covers green yarn reaction that we are learning from the experiment. It also cover uh, the aldo asymmetric synthesis, okay? So uh, it, it is a, a little bit more complicated. And <clears throat> with the green yarn reaction, you already learned two models. May I know which two models we're talking about? Say it again. <clears throat> Say that again. 
may I know which two models you have learned so far from Greenyard? That's vague. Um, okay. I'm not quite sure what you mean by two models. Right here. Oh, I know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. By looking at the answer, you agree. We learned that, right? Okay. Yeah. I tell you what, uh, this is a common mistake also. When I grade the, the pre lab of Green Yard experiment, actually, students do very well. Okay. Uh, I think uh, actually, three or four students almost got perfect score. And I was really impressed because some of the students really have great potential here. Okay. And uh, this section, the, the section two on Tuesday, I think also two, three students got nearly perfect score. I want you to tell, okay, understand your, the purpose of the experiment is always raised to some big theory. Okay. Students always tell me, hey, I will make a product like this, okay? And then I will run melting point, I will run TLC and uh, NMR. I mean, is this the purpose? You don't understand you are actually learning a big model, okay? In order for you to make prediction of the, the optical um, rotation, Okay, you want to know it. Okay, you want to know about this big models. Okay, this is the main purpose. So I, I was a little bit, uh, you know, uh, disappointed how much time we spend on the models. Now people don't know. Well, really, there is a model. Oh, okay. So, okay. So always uh, try, try to understand. Okay, it is these models you want to learn. Actually, this will be in your final. I can tell you it will be in your final exam. Okay. Uh, also, uh, look at this um, um, common mistakes. I want to go over, okay, potentially, okay, you're, you're making a byproduct once you get this bring your region attacked, this molecule. And you all know you need two moles of magnesium per mole of benzoin in this reaction. And I think people are really, really good indicating this OH group will be attacked. At the same time, okay, the other carbonyl group also gets attacked. When this OH group gets attacked, it is because this green yard region right here is super, super basic, okay? And the methyl group and this hydrogen will produce methane gas together, right? At the same time, you will create a alkoxide right here. So there is a minus charge coupled with the magnesium and the iodide species. Am I right? Okay, so th this is one mole being used. And then the other mole will be utilized to serve as a nucleophile. Okay, so students are really good at this. They know most, or I should say, we, most students, only one or two students didn't get it, okay? Overall, you need two moles. Overall, you're creating two alkoxide, okay? Two alkoxide. So uh, oxide means the O minus here, another O minus here, after the nucleophilic attack. Okay, so when this happens, we realize it is this magnesium serving as a loose acid and chelating the carbonyl group, okay? And I also explained to all of you, when the chelating is occurring, it is capable of moving this alkoxide at the same time. So you will be able to write a transition state for you to determine which side of the nucleophilic attack will be more favorable, okay? And therefore, 
there are two stereoisomers produced from this reaction, but from this model you're learning, you know it is this product, 2A, producing major quantity, right? This is what we learned so far. Yeah. Agree? Okay, all right. And I, since I have already explained the can, uh, crane chelation already, and I want you to do the same and make the prediction, okay? Now, since you have done the prediction with the Falcon on model, I want you to do the same with the crane chelation. See if you're able to make the prediction and produce the 2A as well, okay? All right, now, the common mistakes, not only that people don't mention the models, okay? There is another, there is another problem. Students forgot to write, um, let me see, the, the hydrogen plus moles. Okay. <laughs> I think during the lecture, I did ask everybody, read the procedure one more time, okay? Now look at this. You put the reaction mixture in the uh, Rombaum flask, but at the end of the reaction, okay, you, know, you run some TLC, you should be able to see, you know, uh, one, one dot or two dots, okay, uh, reactant versus the product, then you cool it down, okay? Now, can you follow my hand right here? I did ask everybody, can you tell me when you treat the mixture using 10% sulfuric acid, 50 ml. What are you doing here? What is the purpose adding the sulfuric acid? Making the O minuses mm -hmm. into alcohol okay. groups. Say that again, because uh, your voice is kind of far. Oh. You're making the OHs into uh, alcohol groups. Okay, we'll go back. You're saying it was a alkoxide, so I want to protonate it, right? Yes. You're right. You regenerate that OH. At the same time, you also protonate this alkoxide, right? So there are two moles of alkoxide per mole of benzoin, am I right? Okay, so I want all of you, actually when I, I request that too, I requested um, all of you to show me exactly how many moles of a hydrogen plus you are adding into the reaction mixture. Okay, I can tell you I would say probably one student out of my 24 students answered that question in the region table. Okay, I don't, I don't think uh, it is that difficult and I know you have the knowledge. Okay, all you have to do, hello, all you have to do is go back to general chemistry where you have 10% solution. What does it mean? That means I have 10 grams of uh, sulfuric acid molecule dissolved in 100, hey, is a gram or ml of solution. <clears throat> when people write 10%, hello, it can be based on grams, it can be based on ml, okay? So 10 grams sulfuric acid in 100 grams of solution that is one possibility the other possibility is 10 grams of sulfuric acid no sweat 100 ml is another scenario okay it is not specified here but either way we know we have enough hydrogen plus to protonate that alkoxide and we're only using 50 ml so i want you to figure out okay based on your general chemistry knowledge, 
Okay, on Thursday, can, may I ask all of you to do this part? Then I can give you that 0.5 points <clears throat> on the reagent table. Okay, at least I think one or two students should give a try, okay? Uh, you may say, Ms. Jing, why are you so mean? Why do you want us to dig into it? Okay, if you don't do it now, I can tell you in the report, Dr. Lopez or Dr. Well, according to the report scheme, uh, I, I, you know, I, I grade last year. Okay, this is one of the question we want you to review. Okay, so this is this is a question coming from the report last year. Okay, a, a question I think it is two or three points out of like 15 points. So it's, it's something we want you to review, okay? Okay, so Thursday, please. Okay, check this. 10 gram per 100 gram or 10 gram per 100 ml. Can you give me the two scenario, okay? And tell me what is the moles of a hydrogen plus, okay? And figure out is this a sufficient amount to protonate the alkoxide on the benzoin. Are you all with me, hello? Yes. Okay. I'm offering actually a, a bonus point opportunity as well, okay? Not only you get, I want everybody to get, try to earn that point, you know, that, that, that credit back because you already have knowledge. You just don't remember I did ask, okay? You said something was missing in the reagents table. Are you talking about a molar ratio or did, or did you, here? were you? Here, you're talking about here? Yeah, are, are you oh, talking about? We all know about this amount, right? We all, about, we, we all know about the amount of magnesium you're adding. We all know about the amount of the methyl iodide you're, you're adding right here. You know the moles, <clears throat> but do you know the moles of the hydrogen plus? You don't. You only write down, I'm going to add 50 ml. But no, I wrote down the millimoles. That on, I the, on the hydrogen plus? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I got the right answer. You're one of the very few who answered it, okay? But not everybody did. I can tell you most people, and I think 20 students of my 24 students don't, don't have the answer, although I, I did ask in the lecture, okay? So Andrew, you got it, but other people didn't get it, okay? Yeah, are you gonna post a, repost the new grades? I will. This week okay. after I finish grading the Aldo, I will do it. <laughs> <clears throat> the thing is, I, I cannot return the report back to you and, and show you what you did wrong, right? I'm just showing, I'm covering the common mistake in the class now. I wanna tell you, this is a important issue, okay? You don't give a random amount. There is, this is based on calculation. We, we are <clears throat> asking our chem major students to understand, especially for acid and base. You always want to know the quantity, okay? All right, and so this is another common mistake, okay? So, I, well, Andrew, you did it. Uh, well, I'll, I'll go back and check, okay? Very few people, I think it, less than three, answer that question, okay? Okay, and, and then what else? Um, the other problem, I think people didn't really pay attention <clears throat> to the fact that you're doing recrystallization because you have actually two products. Scenario, potentially you can produce two potential stereoisomers. Assuming the first chiral center from benzoin is already fixed, okay? There are two, two scenarios having this in the R, R or the S sequence for the substituents <clears throat> when the new chiral center is formed. And I just want to point out <clears throat> this too is not gonna be equal, okay? Because according to the, uh, this, this pr 
prediction from Cram or Felking on, you know one of them is produced in major quantity. The other is not zero, okay? It's, it's produced also. The other stereoisomer is also produced at the same time, but you rely on recrystallization to get rid of that 2B, okay? So this is also the, the reason you want to run a recrystallization here, not because you have some other contaminant. It is, it is because you want to single out the desirable one, okay? And right here, I want to ask everybody, why do we have a plus minus sign here? Because a student asked me yesterday, what is the purpose of writing a plus, a plus minus here? Another plus minus, another plus minus? Tell me, bonus point opportunity. What is the purpose of plus minus? Hey, you know the answer, okay? I mean, the obvious thing is to, it, it, it means there's two different choices, like a, a racemic mixture. You're thinking on the right track, okay? Andrew, I'll give you one point. But we're not providing you the reactant that is racemic. We don't, okay? We provide you a specific sequence like that. Okay, this is being provided and this is being fixed. Okay, but you're mm -hmm. right. There are two stereoisomers possible. Okay, we draw line and line and line here, but we didn't draw the three dimensional <laughs> picture for this chiral center. Am I right? Okay, we didn't show you the wedge and dot line. No, we didn't. So we are just telling you, hey, this is, this is not, you know, for reaction scheme, we just want to show you we're interested in reducing this couple new group here. And we're not making any big change on this chiral center right here. That's why we just, you know, make the scheme, the reaction scheme simplified. Okay, and actually it could be written with stereo specific structure like this. Okay, since we don't do that, so we give you plus minus telling you there are two possibility. It's either R sequence or the S sequence for the, for the uh, you know, priority on the substituents. Are you all with me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, this is the reason, okay? You will see that a lot uh, when you read uh, articles from uh, JOC, the Journal of uh, Organic Chemist Chemistry. Yeah, people a lot of times, okay, they don't, they don't want you to worry about the first chiral center, just pay attention to the second. This is the change we're making and this is a reaction scheme and it is potentially Okay, two stereo isomers there, okay? Mm -hmm. But when we run the reaction, we only give you one. We will not give you a mixture, we don't, okay? If you, if you know the beauty of uh, organic synthesis, people are very, very stereo specific, okay? When they run reaction, okay? All right, so the same thing happened here, okay? It is telling you, okay, Potentially, I have, uh, you know, for this 2A, when, when this new chiral center is created, okay, it is also uh, two pot potential stereoisomers, two, two potential stereoisomers, okay, depending on the sequence, okay. In other words, if you change the sequence on the first chiral center, then, you know, the Felking on model will give you prediction to produce another one, 
okay, just opposite to whatever is written here, okay? So therefore, yeah, there, there are two, uh, potentially, there are two stereoisomers, two, okay, for each. Anyway, uh, because one student asked me this, I thought, you know, this may be important to all of you, okay? And the other thing is, uh, Dr. Lopez, okay, he wanted me to show you this JOC format. <clears throat> he sent me an email and said, oh, po uh, please post this to your section. And I don't know whether you got this posting already from his announcement. Okay. The reason I want, he wants to show you this is because, you know, people have no problem writing um, procedures. Okay. It is when you report the NMR data or the TLC data, okay, or the IR data, okay, try to understand in the professional writing, we don't, we don't create table. It is taking too much space, okay? We don't create table just for RF. And then for IR, we give another peak assignment. We don't do that, okay? Look at this, okay, IR, there are so many peaks important to the study, okay? And then people don't even need to point out, okay, what uh, is this a uh, 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 carbonyl group or, or this is a uh, 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 ether group? We don't care, okay? I shouldn't say we don't care. We don't want to create a, a table to take up space because only chemists will read this and chemists, when we read these numbers, we know what bond is associated with this uh, vibrational mode, okay? We know that. So we don't really need to be informed again. So it become a brief shorthand form, okay, when you present data, okay? So just in case in the future, in the, you know, I remember in the ALDO uh, report, you're required to write formal report. This is the JOC format I was referring to, okay? And look at the NMR, okay? Look at this doublet of doublet. This is the way we write it, okay? We give you the J constant, okay? And then we give you the, the gap. And then, wait a minute. Okay, so another doublet right here. Okay, there's only one hydrogen. And so multiplet right here. Okay, so you realize, okay, in the professional writing, okay, this is very much standard, okay, to save the space. Okay, all right. And so I think I'm pretty sure he posted already, but he want me to emphasize one more time because this is a, associate with the lab training, okay? So in the future, if you are required to write a formal report, if we specify formal report, this is the format for you to report the TLC or IR or NMR data, okay? You get it? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, now one more. <clears throat> one more items that Dr. <clears throat> want to announce, okay? He was saying he wants this in the peptide report, uh, report that is due next week, early next week, I'm sorry, not this one. Peptide report, okay? Look at this, he wants introduction, discuss the need, of protective group. You all know that, right? And then include reaction schemes for all reaction perform. Now, student asked me yesterday, hey, machine, what is scheme? What is the reaction scheme? Okay, reaction scheme is for you to show what happened to the molecule as an overall uh summary okay so in other words the scheme is it's not 
the scheme is not for mechanism. It is for you to present reactant and then the product or reactant, intermediate and product. Okay, without showing how this electron pair will attack one place rather than the other. It is not, okay? So in other words, okay, this reaction one and reaction two in the peptide lab manual, okay, let me show you this right here. Okay. This is called reaction scheme, okay? You don't show me the electron dots. You don't show me nucleophile coming to, okay, one place rather than the other, uh, rather than the other okay? And, and put it in even more uh, generic, generic form. If you know how to make ester, ester actually come from carboxylic acid reacting with alcohol then the reaction scheme can be written as R -O -C -O -O -H, and then alcohol is ROH, and then you produce R-C-O-O-R as a ester. That is also called reaction scheme, okay? So it's not the mechanism we're talking about, all right? Okay, so <clears throat> this is part of the report requirement. <clears throat> for a dipeptide. This is from Dr. Lopez again. <clears throat> okay, explain why starting the amino acid, okay, is, is a sweeter ion, okay? I think I lecture about that, and Dr. Lopez also lecture about that, please. Okay, tell us, okay, why is it written as plus charge, minus charge, internal salt, okay? The other thing is, okay, result and discussion. And you're supposed to comment on the impurity and analyze the crew product. <clears throat> I'll come to that when I show you the, the, uh, the lab data. Okay, for your information, this part, all the, all the NMR and the IR data have been uploaded on Dr. Lopez's web, um, beach board announcement. Okay, he told me, he, okay, he did it. And I receive all the data and then nor I already organized it. And I want all of you to take a close look. Okay, you want to uh, look at the data yourself. Okay, and you will utilize the data to write the report. Again, this is the dry lab, okay? Now the last question here, this is the part I will come back right away, okay? The last part is that you're supposed to know what BOP is, okay? Benzo, triazo, and then this long, big, weird molecule. It can be used as a peptide coupling reagent. Okay, it is a coupling reagent and it possesses a major drawback because a byproduct can, will be formed if you use it as an activation um, of the carboxylic group. That byproduct is very toxic. Okay, and we, we want you to discuss what is that byproduct and why it is toxic. Now this is something, oh, I, I know where to find the answer, okay? I briefly touched this subject when I lecture TBTU, when I present that, I remember eight pages of slides. It was a very short touch, however, this information is provided on the literature I have already uploaded. It's there, okay? And we just want you to dig into that uh, important review article and then find the answer. It is just for you, once a lifetime at least, open up 
the literature we provide to you, okay? It is a very good review, okay? So go ahead and flip that pages one time. How about that, okay? Okay, so I will leave that to you, okay? I'm not gonna talk about it, but on Thursday, I will see who did the research and please provide the clue. And if I okay it, I will give you the bonus point, okay? I offer the same thing to the other lab section, okay? Because I just don't want to give you the answer, tell you the truth, okay? I can't, I cannot train the students this way. You're waiting for a free answer. I don't want to provide that free answer at all, okay? Here, we talk about the TBTU, okay? And the result is we are getting resmic mixture of the resmic from the peptide synthesis, okay? And let's go back to the lab result and see, are we able to determine the ratio of stereoisomers present in the crude versus the purified product? Okay, this is study by NMR. Okay, and we want you to, to discuss how the stereoisomers are formed by you know a mechanism. Okay, and I think I've spent so so much time already on this this um, that particular slide, and people did very well in the mechanism writing. I want all of you to go back, okay? And review one more time. Okay, uh, and let me uh, talk about the NMR result now. Okay, is there any questions so far before we look at the lab data? Hmm. William? Any question at all? You usually ask a question. Um, nope, I think I'm good. Okay. How about you, Andrew? No, I just struggled a little bit with the. Uh, I struggled a little bit with the. Um, what do you call it? Uh, the purification flow chart, but. Oh, which one? The green yard or the peptide? The the green yard. Okay, I'll come back to that. Okay, now students, let me finish the peptide uh, discussion, or I would say NMR data. Then we'll come back to Green Yard. How about that? Okay. All right. So the NMR. Okay, the NMR result of the crude and the purified recrystallized product are not the same. Okay, and I want all of you to share with me okay do you remember in the peptide synthesis you have this reaction one i call okay you only want to protect this amino group and block it in the reaction two you introduce another amino group and then you make the second peptide bond okay so look at this Molecules are here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now tell me which one, which one is stereospecific? Remember here, you start off with either D or L assignment. Remember? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, Right here, we have uh, this non stereospecific carbon, but actually, you have been provided with a stereospecific molecule, am I right? Okay, mm -hmm. I just want to ask you one more time. When you finish this reaction and block this amino group, are you able to conserve the stereochemistry here on this carbon? Yes. Yes. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Yes, for sure. Okay. 
because this reaction between amino group and the anhydride, you didn't really change the, uh, you didn't change to sp2. <laughs> it was always tetrahedral, okay? You didn't touch anything, right? So the, the sequence on this chiral center conserved, stereochemistry conserved. Thank you for the good answer. Okay, now look at reaction two. You use your product from reaction one, either D or L, right? In terms of the, in terms of the optical rotation, you start out with either D or L right here in the reaction two, am I right? Are you following mm -hmm. my hand? Yeah. Yes, okay, and then you run the second peptide reaction, okay? You change the COOH group, okay, into a amide group right here, okay? And look at this second amino group right here, this chiral center right here. Is this stereochemistry conserved or not? Yes. Is it conserved or not? Yes. How about the first chiral center here? Is it conserved or not? No. The answer is no. Thank you. Thank you, William. I'll give you one point. Okay, you're able to say it so quickly because you already learned. From last lecture, I told you, it doesn't matter you start with a D or L. Okay, you will get resume, a resume mixture, am I right? Because this chiral center here may reverse the sequence on the priority. It may start with a D, but it will finish as an L. How much? Maybe 50%, right? Because this chiral center right here went through transition from sp3 hybridization to sp2 hybridization before receiving the second amino group am i right and so i want all of you to remember this okay doesn't matter okay your reaction one produce yeah either d if you start with d it didn't change or you may start with L if your starting point is L, okay? You all have one direction, okay? One optical direction coming to the second reaction starting point, okay? But the thing is, during the coupling activation process, okay, you were using ty uh, the triethylamine and you changed the sequence of the chiral center right here. When I say sequence, I mean the priority of the substituents. It may change from R to S, okay? Or if you have D, you change to L, okay? It is all, oh no, it's only a matter of how you name it, okay? So D, 50% of chance may change to L and L, 50% of chance may change to D, okay? According to, yeah, according to the mechanism. I sacrifice my alpha hydrogen right here, right here, okay, into the triethylamine, which is used as a base when you do this attack, remember? Okay, you need that triethylamine to do the alpha hydrogen attack, or else the reaction will not get started. Okay, all right, ladies and gentlemen, so you know, if your starting point is D, which you make from reaction one, okay, you will have a D and L right here, two possibility. Okay, if you start with an L, then your finished product right here, okay, where I'm pointing at, will be L and D mixed together. Are you all with me? Yes. Doesn't yes. matter where your starting point is, okay? You all get mixture, okay? Okay, so when, how, how we name this product right here, okay? 
you know this is already fixed and i can tell you this chiral center has a l rotation of l okay it's already fixed i told you this is conserved okay from the second amino group this chiral center conserved the stereochemistry this one doesn't okay so starting point d you can create dl or ll mixture okay dl or ll okay and whoever okay the students who have the l as a starting point will have ll but mixed with dl as a contaminant do you agree i've said that several times try to understand okay you learn it okay today you're learning at the, the the second or the fifth time i can tell you okay all right so i think i went over the nmr with you once and i told you the only way to distinguish the dl versus the ll all you need to do is check the alpha methyl group why do i call this alpha okay next to the carbonyl group okay i only need to check this methyl group right here and i'll be able to quantify how much product is produced in that process and it so happened that dl and the ll do not have the same chemical shift for this methyl group so far so good yep okay now i want all of you to write down all of you please write down okay the dl and then the ll okay so starting point d and this is the l so i call it dl if the starting point is l and i have an l here then it is ll but the dl will be mixed with ll as a contaminant okay and the ll also is mixed with the resume okay so you will not be able to get a pure compound you always get the isomers mixed together two isomers mixed together okay all right all right so i think i pointed out to you okay ideally after we purify so which compound is this after we purify this compound which is ll okay we realize there is the methyl group right here okay that will be produced as a doublet because i only have one hydrogen neighboring to me so that methyl group become the key peak for me to distinguish the two stereoisomers okay <laughs> okay one more time i know this is not too pretty but i just want to give you some raw idea and please write down one more time on your notebook okay for ll for ll hello this is my ll product okay follow me this one is l and this is l if it is pure then the methyl group will give you a doublet right here can you give me a rough estimate what is the chemical shift right where hello are you, are you following my hand right here yeah like one it's like 1.3 1.3 to 1.4 how about let's say 1.4 okay can you write down ll produce a doublet at 1.4 ppm is that okay mm -hmm. okay how about dl 
DL, very, very similar NMR, okay? But just look at the difference. Now look at this. DL, if this is purified and this is only pure D DL, okay? Look at this doublet. Where is it located? 1.2. 1.2. It is also a doublet, am I right? Okay, so write down, everybody, LL doublet 1.4 ppm. DL doublet 1.2 ppm. Okay? You need this number later when I show you the real data from our lab coming from last year. Okay? Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. I know is this. Is it Mariana answering back? Yeah. Thank you. I can recognize your voice. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's see who's here. My goodness. Five students. I can tell you, I know the other four or five students must try very hard trying to sign up for the Zoom. It's such a problem nowadays. Okay, now look at Look at the file. In total, Dr. Lopez sent me, go ahead and count. Okay, on this LL, hello, look at this LL. I want you to read the file name, okay? The crude LL, but we zoom it. Zoom it where? Hey, we only want you to look at the methyl group here, if it is zoomed, okay? And the same crude LL, it's just a full scale NMR. Okay, so this is the crude. And remember, the crude is, is not gonna be pure. It's a mixture of the two stereoisomers, right? And we'll see that later, okay? And follow my arrow. After we recrystallize the LL, okay, we zoom and we give you a full scale NMR. How about the DL? The same, okay? The DL, we zoom, and we give you the full scale for the crude. We also give you recrystallized, zoomed, and full scale. Are you all with me? So total of eight spectra from peptide experiment, okay? All right, now before I step forward, tell me, do you remember how we purify the crew product? In order to get the final product singled out? How do we purify it? You know the answer, please, Mariana. The petroleum ether? No, oh, no, that's Green Yard. That's Green Yard. Oh, okay. okay. All right. You see that? Mariana, do you see this? You did it by recrystallization, right? Right? Yes. Yeah. The ethyl acetate. Yes. Very good. William, you got another point. Thank you. You know something? Yeah. William has great potential because you're able to connect, okay? I, I can tell you, it, you, don't, you don't have to be exotic or you know, top-notch chemist now, but if you're, you're happy to pay attention to details like this, yes, you have that potential to be a great scientist, okay? All right, I want you to keep going, okay? For the crude and the recrystallized Okay, you compare that for LL and the DL. This is what we want you to see, whether you, our TBTU is doing a good coupling job in that uh, synthesis, okay? And we'll, call, we'll show you the result right away. And let me tell you, at the same time, Dr. Lopez also provide the product one, okay? This is the product one. And let me, let me show you, for the D and for the L, he provide the NMR, uh, I mean the IR, 
Okay, so obviously in that product one, NMR data look very similar, okay? But in IR, you probably can tell some difference. Okay, I don't know. Okay, you take a look, okay? And then at the end, okay, right here, this is the NMR for product one, and we're not able to see a big difference. So, so this is it, okay? Okay, anyway, that total of 11 spectra, okay, have been uploaded in Dr. Lupa's uh, beach board posting, okay? And I want to share with you, okay, are you ready? Okay. Tell me one more time in the, in the crude, are you supposed to see this LL only? Hello? Are you supposed to see LL only? LL isomers only? Hello? No. No. You're supposed to see mixture of two oh. stereo isomers. Am I right? And mm -hmm. did yes. I ask you to write down where can you tell difference? Where can you find that two isomers <clears throat> exist? Did you read, did you write it down? 1.3 and 1.2. Yes, actually not that close, okay? It is, I'll show you. This is the moment of truth, okay? Okay. All right, many, many peaks. But we are only interested in the... Doublet. The mm -hmm. alpha methyl group, right? Do you see that doublet right here? Mm -hmm. Do you see this another doublet? Okay, so tell me, is this the DL or LL a major quantity? Now this is... The LL. Is this the LL? Yes. yes. The LL, hello, is actually written right here, okay? Oh. <laughs> okay, let me see. Okay, on top of on top of the spectrum, do you see this right here? Mm -hmm. Can you read a crude LL right here? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this LL is not pure. It is mixed with the DL, am I right? Because I see another mm -hmm. doublet here. That's the alpha methyl group, right? Mm -hmm. Yuri, all right, can someone tell me? I think Mariana has great potential. I want to offer this opportunity to Mariana. Can you tell me between LL and DL, roughly, what is the ratio? If I provide you this numbers underneath, you should know the, how to use them, right? Mariana? Mm -hmm. You see this little bracket here, little bracket here? It is telling you this is this is the number referring to this peak. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then this number is referring to this peak. Mariana, tell me what is roughly what is the ratio? Mm -hmm. Roughly. Three to one. Say that again. Three to one. Three to one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you have a calculator with you? Um, it actually just died yesterday. What? You don't have an iPhone with you? No? All right. But can you just eyeball it? 0.35, how about that? And 0.07. So what's the ratio, hello? Can you just 
Eyeball it. Okay, just eyeball these two numbers. What is the ratio? Mm -hmm. uh, one third or something. Let me go get my phone. <laughs> it's charging. No, no, don't worry about charging. Okay, this is called just call this 0.35 and the other one's 0.07. 35 and 7. What's the ratio here? It shouldn't be too hard. Hello, Cam 40 students. One third of it. Is this one third? Does it look like one third here? You just look at the height. Hello, how about that? One, two, three. Four, four. It's actually more than ah. Can someone give me a better ratio here? One fifth. And uh, can you use a calculator? I can tell you these are hydrogen integral. Okay, if you change this to one, then what is this? If you change o o six seven five, if you change this hydrogen integral to one. What is this going to be? Oh my goodness, is it that hard? 5.17. <laughs> Thank you, William, you're right. It is a roughly 5 to 1 ratio. Yeah. Andrew said that. Okay, Andrew said that? I didn't hear it. Okay, thank you. Andrew, I'll give you one point, okay? Thank you. All right. So, Andrew, tell me which stereoisomer is dominate, dominating? The LL. The LL. Whereas DL as a contaminant in the crude sample, right? So, right after the synthesis, okay, right after we isolate the solid, okay, and then we get this. Uh, solvent remove under rotor map, the rotor vap, we get solid. We collect the solid, we take melting point, and then we submit NMR, and this is what we get. Okay? And it's telling you, yeah, your desirable compound, the desirable product too, is actually in majority, five to one ratio. Okay, now this student is doing a very good job. Okay? Uh, there is the best result I have ever seen in my class. Guess what? It is eight to one ratio. It was very impressive. It's, it's telling us that TBTU is doing a great job. Am I right? Am I right? That activation agent, yeah. It's able to selectively produce the desirable product in major quantity, okay? All right. So the crude is collected and then we further purify it, okay? Okay, now students, it's common sense, okay? If you see such a huge peak like this, okay? A lot of huge peaks are coming from, guess what? You, you can tell me, what is it? A huge peak like this? Like this, it's usually the solvent, okay? Believe me, it's solvent. We can't really dry the solid that well. And so a lot of times the solvent, the solvent residue is still there. Okay? All right. Let me move forward and I'll give you the zoom for the crude and you see this. Okay? Yeah. This is my desirable one. This is the contaminant, which is the the stereo isomer, okay? All right, and let's do the recrystallize. Are you ready? Let me show you the recrystallize full spectrum. Okay. Wait, so the recrystallize full spectrum still have both present? Let me, can you go on a little bit? Let's, yeah, I will show you right away. Oh, okay, but it's not in doublet. <laughs> You're right, Andrew. Okay, this is to show you, hey, LL is now a pure LL. I can tell you this is not a doublet. So what is it then? It is a solvent residue, okay? Because remember, from crude 
to recrystallize purified you have to go through another round of solvent addition am i right and then yeah. solvent addition and then solvent removal and my goodness okay it was so much i mean some solvent there however the dl is now totally gone now so the solvent will take the place to take the position okay so let me tell you this is the solvent okay and i keep telling you in this spectrum you will see a lot of solvent peaks okay and so once again what is the solvent you use for recrystallization can you look it up ethyl acetate ethyl acetate thank you so bear in mind ethyl acetate is still there okay and so it will give you a couple peaks in addition to your product peaks okay mm -hmm. all right and so let's see whether they purified zoom purify zoom okay the the dl is almost gone all right all right so no sweat let's do the dl then our starting point reactant is d and we make dl and this is our desirable d mixed with the l as a contaminant Okay, so DL is mixed with LL, right? This is, this is what you're supposed to see. How do you like it? I like it. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to see. The, uh... That is what you're supposed to see. So if I ask you, is TBTU doing a good job in terms of the uh, activation of the carboxylic group the answer is yes okay does it have does it show any stereo selectivity not quite yet because i still have some quantity of the stereo isomers present in the crude okay so it is doing the job but not quite perfect okay ideally you would like to have crude with only my goodness how about less than five percent okay all right, so once again, what's the main peak for? What is the yeah. main peak for? Yeah. And so what is this the little doublet for? LL. Yeah. LL, okay, you got it, okay? And so let's zoom, let's zoom in. Crude zoom in, you see how beautiful that is? All right, can someone tell me roughly what is the ratio between the DL and the LL? One to four. You're right, four to one ratio, right? Thank you, William. Yeah, roughly four to one ratio with DL being the target, okay? And in the crude, it is the LL, okay, contaminating it. Okay, and I think you and I, I think one time I lectured about this, and student says, oh, Miss Jean, stereoisomers, no problem, you know, we can just purify it. Yeah, if you're doing this outside of your human body, of course, you can, you can purify it. But if you take it as a medication, my goodness, you don't want stereoisomers in your body, okay? Please don't do that, okay? Because oftentimes, the stereoisomers will give you, sorry, the cancer reaction, okay? We call it very, very undesirable, okay? Okay? Try to understand, protein is a very sensitive business, okay? It's, it's a, it plays such a vital role in your, in, your, in your body, and you just don't want any uncontrollable situation, okay? All right, next, I will show you the recrystallize full spectrum. Recrystallize, okay? The recrystallize DL. How do you like it? Is this the same? 
No. It's not the same, but it's the same problem you see with the LL purified. Yeah, they both have the triplets. They still have the triplet. Now tell me what, whether this triplet is associated with your alpha hydrogen. No, it is mm. not. It is the solvent. Okay. Mm. Okay. All right. So the DL predominant, right? In this case, right? It is in the range of 1.25 right here, right? It is that range, okay? So DL is where I'm pointing at, okay? It is roughly this range, and LL is more to the left, okay, right here, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so are you clear now in terms of the NMR, what you need to look at, and how do you determine the resume, or we call it extent of resumization, or we can call uh, the ratio of the two stereoisomers, or we, there, there are many ways to say it, okay? It all means, hey, can you find a percentage uh, of the two, okay? In the pure, you can say I have 100%, okay? But in the crude, I do find, yeah, either five to one ratio or a four to one ratio, okay? When the, when the contaminant is in the minor quantity of like 20 to 25 percent, okay? I told you the best one in my class is eight to one ratio. And the worst case was two to one ratio, okay? And so the, what we present to you right here from last year was actually between the two, okay? All right, so I think I'm done with the, um, the NMR data. Okay, I want all of you to download it and then, in, then inter and interpret, interpret, interpret the peaks associated with, my goodness, each one. Remember I went through the type with all of you, okay? I told you you want to determine. Oh my goodness, this is not this is not a beautiful drawing. Okay, let me go back here. <sighs> hey, what's going on? Huh? I hope you're not tired. It's only oh, yeah. noon time. <laughs> where you're supposed to be enjoying your the you know fresh air somewhere. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now look at this, okay? This is your AM product, okay? And look at how many different types of hydrogens are here, okay? And go ahead and predict singlet, doublet, triplet, etc. And go ahead, do the peak assignment, okay? And I want all of you to treat this nitrogen just like another carbon, okay? The amide <laughs> hydrogen sometimes behave, most of the time, I should say, most of the time behave just like another carbon, okay? Just like another hydrogen, okay? A couple the same way, okay? So far, so good? Yep. All right, then I think I can go back to, I can go back to this one more time before I talk about the bring your flow chart, okay? Have time report. Okay, you learned already based on the NMR data, stereoisomers, okay? And you find the ratio. Okay, and the last question, I want you to dig out the answer, okay? On top of this question, I also want you to find out the moles of the hydrogen proton, okay? The moles of hydrogen proton for the green yard reaction, green yard, okay? Now, let me go back to green yard <coughs> lab manual. All right. Uh. 
question so far? Hey, do you remember Cozy? Yeah. <laughs> it is showing you the two dimensional map, who's coupling with who, okay? And remember, this is the, the line you wanna draw across, diagonal, and then you find symmetry. So the peak, okay, going up or down. Okay, where you, you will find a peak here. This is the regular PPM value, okay? But when you go up and down, you will find, okay, my peak at three PPM will couple with the peak at 4.5 PPM because I, I see another, another peak here, okay? This is the use, okay? I want you to go back, okay? Now the green yard work chart or flow, flow chart for the workup. Okay, uh, making the green yard region is very straightforward, okay? Uh, straightforward, very dangerous, very tricky too, okay? And so look at this. So Andrew, tell me what bothered you when you said you, you're not quite sure about the flow chart. I think I messed up around the, after the rotovac. Oh, I see. Uh, you mean before recrystallization? Yeah, like you rotovac and then you separate. Uh, yeah. And then you recrystallize the solid. Yes, yes. You, 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 will, you will collect some solid right after the crude is collected. Okay, and then you move forward and recrystallize using the petro ether, petroleum ether. Remember? Yeah, and it's going to separate the two. But I don't know. I now, th this uh, is this is for you to write the purpose. Okay, when you create a step here, okay, you want to single out from the two potential product, you want to single out the one that is desirable. Okay. And so most people don't even remember, hey, I actually have two products. Okay. Yes, you do have two products, two stereoisomers. Okay. Now here, I want all of you to look at the procedure right here. Okay. Okay, we run everything in hydrous, in hydrous, you know, the green yard reaction itself is moisture sensitive. Okay, after the reaction is completed, you use the ice bath and mm -hmm. then you introduce, you introduce the sulfuric acid. You want to run in ice bath, okay, when you have a strong acid, and then your mixture mixed together. Oh, you better be careful. A lot of exosome. Okay. And you want to use this proton to protonate the alkoxide, right? Mm -hmm. At the same time, yes, at the same time, there will be magnesium sulfate uh, or some magnesium salt precipitating at the same time, and they all dissolve in the sulfuric acid. And then they will all go into the aqueous phase when you do the extraction. Do you hear me? Okay. Yes. So your uh, organic layer, now what solvent do you have? In, to uh, in total, you have ether, okay? And then you have uh, methylene chloride, right? And mm -hmm. then into a septary funnel, you introduce this, Sulfuric acid first, but did you add anything else? Did you add any other organic solvent? It's probably just methylene chloride and then the ether all together. And then you just shake and shake and shake. Your desirable product will go into the organic phase. Okay, look at the structure. Look at the structure of this compound right here. We write a very small pH pH here, but you know, they are very nonpolar. Although there are two hydroxyl group, okay, they're not going to be make uh, they're not going to be very water soluble at all because the phenyl groups are so big, and 
they are in kind of like balance position, cancel the vector out. So the polarity overall is low. Are you with me? Okay. Yes. yes. So for this reason, your, your desirable product will be in the organic phase. Okay. Then you do the recrystallization. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Then you do the extraction. Uh, yeah, you actually, okay, you, you will, after the certification, or I call protonation, okay, the aqueous layer extracted with ether, okay, you add more ether, the organic layer, keep your product in the ether layer at all time, okay. Then combine the organic layer that has some meth, uh, methylene chloride as well. Okay, and because after you shake so many times, that ether and the methylene chloride layer has some contamination from the moisture. So you want to get rid of the magnesium. Now this is no sweat. People understand. People all know about this. Okay, it is just when you when you introduce the sulfuric acid, I, myself, also Dr. Lopez, also Dr. Nagia, I mean, how many professors, we always want students to figure out this number of 50 ml is not coming from the air, okay? It is through calculation we give you this number, and we want you to do the same, all right? Okay, so Andrew, did I answer your question? Yes. Okay. Okay, now it's, uh, I'm done pretty much for today. So two questions for you to answer. The moles of this. Okay, Andrew, I want you to also calculate, just in case this 10% is based on 10 grams of the solute and 100 grams of the solution. Okay. What is, what is the proton concentration in terms of moles? Okay, mm -hmm. I want you to do that. Okay, are you going to All check right. and see if I have the right answer? I, I will check it on the Zoom lecture, and whoever offer me the answer, I give the bonus point. Okay, because this no, is on the on the on the pre lab. On the pre lab, I if you wrote it down, I will not mark it off. Okay. It is, it is for those who didn't write and who didn't care. I want them to work on this one more time because your Green Yard report will ask for it, okay? And I, I don't want you to let go this opportunity to review your gen chem one more time, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Anyone else has any question here before we say goodbye? Um, I have a question. Okay, what is it, Mariana? I know that you're going to update um, like our grades, but is there any way we could know our feedback on our pre-lab? Like to know what exactly um, we missed the points on? Uh, you know, uh, Mariana, I will, I will post the grade book, okay? And then, and then you, you, you check your grade, and then the only way to see what mistake you have made is to set up a meeting with me in private. Okay. Okay, then we can go over the mistake you made. Because you, you, I mean, if you ask me to send, this is what I do when I grade your report, okay? I create a grading sheet myself with a whole bunch of checkbox. Okay, did you do this step? Oh, did you, did you get me purpose? And that is one point. I'll give a check mark if you did it. Or if I give, if I see answers that I'm not happy with, and I'll deduct 0.5 points there. Okay, this is what I do, and I create a whole list of the checkpoints. Understand? Mm -hmm. So I, for each person, I know what you screw up at. 
Okay. Okay. So I'll be able to uh, take the 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 grade sheet or, or grading scheme. Sorry, I can I can check the grading scheme again, and then I t I will tell you what mistake you made. Then we can go back to the file you you submit it online so i have that file and you can you can take a look at uh the mistake you make on each category okay 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 i did announce my personal id personal meeting id number okay so if you need to see okay if you want to go over the mistakes i want you to set up a private meeting with me okay Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So whenever possible, just let me know by email. Okay, machine. I need it. Then you know, like, it will be best like after after the lecture, after our Zoom lecture, mm -hmm. is usually the best time I can go over the mistake with you. Okay. Okay. Your personal pre lab or your personal report. Okay. Mm -hmm. At the lecture i can only talk about the common mistakes okay yeah makes sense okay anyone else any other question um, if not i'll say goodbye and let's chat on thursday uh, i want all of you to do this okay before we say goodbye um i didn't i didn't i don't go to dr lopez lecture Okay, I don't attend your lecture. Okay, so the, the problem is I don't even know how many how many more chapters he he want to introduce during this last few weeks of lecture. Okay, uh, if you look at this schedule one more time, let me close this. If you look at the schedule one more time right here, we're right here, we're in the middle part now. We have, okay, one class meet to go this week and then two more. And then after that, I don't lecture, okay? But I don't know how much, um, how much Dr. Lopez will teach during this a week and a half here. Okay. And just in case he's doing new chapter and new models. And I know he will give you practice exam as well before the final exam. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I want all of you to do this. When you receive the practice exam, Okay, try to utilize this two week. If you, if you got the practice exam early enough, try to utilize this two weeks and see if we can, um, you know, if I can help you or if you're not able to get the right answer, uh, well, I can help a little bit, okay? Over, over the Zoom chapter. Oftentimes I, I don't really know where the students are be prepared to work on the, the the question at all, like two weeks before the final. Huh? I don't know, but I'm offering my help. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. all right. So before we say goodbye, are we are we okay now? Yeah, for the most part. Okay, then let's. Um, yeah, I'll see you again on Thursday. All right. Bye-bye.